What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Punk Rock Radar. Today, we are doing the No Use for a Name album tier list. We're going to talk about all nine No Use for a Name records in chronological order, rank them S through D with a minimum of actually a maximum of two in every tier. And we're going to have one bonus Tony Sly adjacent record at the end. And we are joined today by a very special guest. We've got Johnny, the owner of Cat's Claw Records over there in the UK. Johnny, how are you doing tonight? Uh, really good. Really good. How are you both doing? You doing good? We're doing good. And and Johnny and I just, uh, we just co-released this beautiful uh, pop punk album together. I'm going to leave a link down below if you want to support Cat's Claw and Punk Rock Radar. We've got an orange and green, beautiful vinyl. It's the Look at Martians and Cheap Pops record. Uh, each color limited to 100. So if you want to support us, uh, go hit the link down below. Uh, Kick-ass pop punk record. Definitely worth it. So go check that out. And as always, we're joined by Dylan, a.k.a. Screeching Bottle Rocket from DyingScene.com. Dylan, our third video today. How you feeling? This is my second. Your I second. Didn't, I didn't my partake third. in the other one. <laughs> um... <laughs> I'm good. I'm waiting for my cheap pops. Look at Martians uh, split LP to get here. I think I got the green one. I can't remember, though. It's been a few months. It should be there on Tuesday. So keep an eye out. I threw some special stuff I, in there. for I you. I have all the faith in the world in the United States Postal Service. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I'm sure it's more reliable than ours is. It? Uh, I don't know. But <laughs> I've, I've seen there's like a whole subreddit of what USPS does to your mail. And it's uh, pretty horror scary. Horror stories. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've um I've seen some horror stories of like seeing like records just the corner bits folded in the no, mailbox, so yeah. folded in half and put it in your mailbox. All right. <laughs> so I, I literally um if I send any records out, uh, people must think I'm mad, but it's completely covered in like bubble wrap and shit. And fragile, <laughs> bubble wrap, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I I I find like flick knives coming out of it in case anyone tries to bend it. Like little mechanical <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. I don't really if any if like any FBI are listening <laughs> to public. Yeah, that, when I got my package from you with all the records, it was in like this black shrink wrap, and then like within it bubble wrap. It, it looked like it totally looked like a drug shipment. That's what like I thought. Like a heroin. But it was it was uh it arrived in pristine condition and it's beautiful. So uh yeah, make sure you guys go check that out. And just before we get started, quick. Uh, Cause no use is like a gateway band for a lot of people. So uh, Johnny, do you remember like the first time you heard no use or your first memories, anything about no use for a name before we get started? Yeah, I got, I mean, I got a couple of uh, quite cool stories about them. I mean, the, my, like one of my, I got a few fond memories of no use, but I remember seeing them. There's a festival that used to, well, it still goes on in the UK, but it's, it's awful now. Um, called like Reading and Leeds Festival, which you've probably both heard of. But they used to have a punk rock stage, and I just re always remember um, going along to see Nays for a Name and just Tony Sly up on stage, like backwards cap, yeah. like the thick sideburns, <laughs> and being like, uh, I don't know, I was like 16 or 17 at the time, seeing this sort of like iconic dude up on stage looking so cool and yeah the music goes with it um yeah it always sort of always stays with me and i will i still wear my baseball cap backwards sometimes even um you know an aging punk um but you know for years and years i wouldn't wear it the front way around even if it was the sunniest day my eyes my retinas were burning i'd be like no nah, i'm not doing it i want the sunglasses i'm wearing a baseball cap and it's backwards i don't care um uh, and I remember they played uh, Bristol, which is um, where I'm from in the UK. And it's not a Tony Sly thing, but Matt Riddle was up on stage. And I don't know if either of you got a chance to see him for a name, but he sort of like, you know, had, you know, had controlled the stage completely. And some dude was at the front on his phone. And it's just before the days where everyone's holding camera phones up. I think he's just sending a text message or something. And Matt Riddle doesn't even miss a bass note. Just literally, oh, the guy had a kind of emo style fringe as well, which will be apparent in a minute. Didn't even miss a uh, sort of a bass note at all. That gets the guy's hat, 
pushes his fringe under, puts his hat back on, knocks his phone to one side, and just carries on playing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Badass. All right. So, Dylan, any memories from you? No use? Uh, I don't remember specifically. I mean, around the time I discovered Fat Records, they were probably one of the first bands that I came across along with Strung Out and stuff. Yeah, so the, the last time I saw them, I, I hated was they were opening for Sum 41 uh, in the Roseland Ballroom in New York City. Uh, that, that was the last time I saw them. It was like 2003, and I'm like kicking myself because they rolled around like a lot between 04 and like 08, like in that heyday. And I don't, for some reason, I just didn't go to a lot to see them, and I'll, I'll forever kick myself. So uh, rest in peace, Tony Sly, and let's get this kicked off here. Uh, yep. We're going to do the first No Use album. We've got Incognito from uh, 1990, I think. Spotify says 1991. But uh, Johnny, you're the guest, so I'm going to let you take it away here. Uh, what are your thoughts about Incognito? Yeah, um, not the biggest fan. Um I would go and say that there's nothing that they've like no use released, which I don't, I, I hate. I think I'm like, oh, I really, do. but I've got to put everything in certain tiers. So I'm going to put this in number uh, tier D. Um, it's a bizarre thing because normally ma majority of punk rock bands, you think, listen to their first record, most of bands and the first record is generally a firm, firm favorite. But I went back, I haven't listened to it in absolutely ages, and I went back and listened to it when I was preparing myself for this. And it's just not that many songs. Um, I mean, Tony doesn't sing on every song. Um, he sings some vocals, but I think the original singer, original guitar player was singing as well, singing on some of it. I mean, I guess if you, it's got an old school kind of hardcore um, vibe to it. But yeah, uh, I'm going to put that one in D. Yeah, I, I think you're pretty safe there. Dylan, what about you? I agree, and yeah. I feel bad because I just listened to you guys, especially Johnny Wax Poetic, about no use for a few minutes there. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's a D for me. I mean, uh, my biggest thing is um, Tony's known for two things, I think, his songwriting and his, uh, his voice. And I feel like his voice was still, um, he was coming into his own as far as, singing goes uh on the first few records he's kind of just shouting on these ones um it's not very musical so um it's not bad it reminds me a lot of like uh ribbed era no effects kind of um late 80s like west coast hardcore so it's not bad but uh the, the later stuff is definitely an improvement so we'll have a d for incognito for me yeah i'm, I'm right with you guys like obviously this isn't the sound that no use is known for. This is still like a band, you know, learning to find themselves. So I'm also going to go D as far as this style of albums go. I think it's, it's pretty solid, but it's, it's nowhere near uh, my favorite no use songs or albums. So I rarely listen to this. So D tier for me. So let's move on now. And Dylan, I'll let you take it away with this next one here. We've got don't miss the train. Uh, from 1992, did they get any better, or are you gonna stay in the D tier? Yeah, this one's a slight improvement. Um, Tony starts to sing a little more than shout on this album, um, and uh, yeah, I think it's generally a, a step forward from Incognito. There aren't a whole lot of fan favorite. Um, no use songs on this album. If you look at Spotify, I mean, there aren't any that have a ton of plays, but I do think it's a step up. Um, so I'll give this one a, a light C, and I might regret that later. A light C. All right, Johnny, what about you? Don't miss the train. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I completely agree with Dylan on this one. It's definitely better. And there's there's I was I, what I what I was doing is I was like so I was going through each album. I'm thinking, right, I'm going to take the three best ones from each album and kind of work it out and see some albums, obviously, there's so much good stuff on it. The first album, I could only get two um, at a stretch. 
and this one yeah got there's some good stuff on it like don't miss the train like the you know type of thing yeah. that this is where you can hear tony's uh vocals coming in the melody and stuff still got that great kind of gritty sort of earlier um tony sly vocal style um but yeah i put that one in d as well just because you know we've got to put some in d um but yeah definitely better definitely a better album yeah, I, I'm with you, Johnny. I'm going D on this one too. And I'm 100% with you, actually, because Don't Miss the Train, the title track is my favorite uh, song on here too. I do hear some progression, but again, in a, another record that if I want to hear Don't Miss the Train, I throw on Live in a Dive uh, and not mm. this one. So mm. yeah. I'll take us here into the next one. We've got The Daily Grind, technically an EP, but it's got eight, eight original songs. So we'll keep it here. Um, when... We first were talking about this list. Uh, Dylan and I, he mentioned that Brett Gurowitz was producing, I think, the first one, maybe the first two. And if I had to guess, like, which one Brett produced it, I would think this one, because I hear a lot of Bad Religion sound, especially, like, in the melodies. Uh, this is my first step up for the band. I still don't think there's a ton of standouts on here, but I'm going to put Daily Grind in the C tier. Um, Dylan, what about you, Daily Grind? Until it's gone. Man, this is a big, big, big step up, man. Uh, they're on fat, uh, and uh, this is a great record. Uh, it's kind of weird because, uh, I mean, most bands like EPs aren't very highly regarded or um, looked back on fondly or whatever. But uh, this is uh, this is on par with some of their best albums. Uh, I love this record. Um, so I'm going to put this one in the A tier. Wow. All right, Johnny, what about you? Bad now you've put it in the A tier. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, this is a massive improvement. As touched on what Dylan said, yeah, they've just been signed to Fat. Um, they, you know, this was the early sort of development of the, the sort of Fat sound that everybody sort of loved in the 90s. You know, you can really hear like the production on it and things like that. It's a lot better. Um, I am going to put uh, that one in C um, just because I think um, some of it might be some of the later albums might be a bit nostalgia um, um, when I was sort of, you know, remind me good times and all that sort of thing. But yeah, I'm going to put Daily Grind in C, but um, I'm slightly regretting that, but I'm going <laughs> to stick with the guns. You do Shout get one more the, the transition on. between uh, the transition between until it's gone and old what's his name. I'm a big fan of like sequencing, and I think that's uh, excellently sequenced. I can get behind that. So, Dylan, why don't you keep us rolling here? Leche con carne. I think this is like for me anyway. This this is the one I he I hear the major jump, but I'll let you talk about it first. It wasn't me. It wasn't you. It wasn't anybody. It wasn't yeah, it's the first uh, full-length album on Fat, and definitely uh, this is where they hit their stride for sure. And they uh, they sw completely moved over from the hardcore sound to the more uh, uh, pop punk, skate punk kind of sound. Um, so this is an easy S tier for me. S tier, damn! All right, uh, Johnny, go for it. Leche con carne. I wasn't gonna go quite that high, but I'm curious where you're going with it. I'm 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 completely agree with Dylan on this Damn. one. Um, second straight in this. Um, there's there's a couple of I won't to ruin anything. There's a couple of in my eyes golden golden names for a name albums which I go to. I mean, you're looking at Hatch Kong Khan. Um, I mean, the whole album. I could you know I I can't see a bad song on it. I picked out. Um, Soulmate, Justify Black Eye, uh, Straight From The Jacket is some of my personal favourites on there. But I was just going through it again. How could I possibly pick certain tracks on it? It's just so good. So, um, yeah, S. And uh, you could tell as a band that they really found their stride on these albums and their sound. And, you know, you could there's lots of bands were coming out at that time and punk was really really becoming starting to become massive 
and you could tell that you know there was they had lots of they probably taken influences from a slightly slightly poppier sound um but yeah um yeah s all the way for me all right i'm gonna have to defend myself here because i'm putting it in c also here here's the thing I think Soulmate is an S tier song, without a doubt. At, at up to this point in the catalog, it's their most memorable song, the most catchy song they've written. But for me, I, I prefer like the No Use for a Name, like the pop punk band No Use for a Name. And I still feel like in that vein, yeah, they wrote Soulmate, a great song, but they're not there yet um, as a as a full package. Other than that, like you said, Justified Black Guy, another good song. Personally, I don't find it as a great No Use for a Name song. Um, and the other stuff coming up, like you could see, like I've kind of gone D, D, C, C. Like I'm a big fan of what's to come still. So just because this is how we play the game where you've got to put some in every tier, uh, being honest with myself, I've got to just stick it in C and keep my S and A for stuff that's yet to come. So with that said... Uh, we're moving on here to Making Friends from uh, 1997. And Johnny, I'll let you walk us through this one now because I'm kind of doing my picks a little bit on the fly. <laughs> I might need to do a little bit of rearranging. Yeah, so Making Friends, yeah. Um, this was clearly their kind of, I guess, breakout uh, album, which... Um, this is really when um i think this did this come out round about the, i can't remember the dates so but it's come out round about the time of like dookie and stuff this is 97 uh, lecce was 95 this is 97 97 so. oh right way after then okay well they this one here you know it's got some really good guest vocals on it uh mighty mike boss tones um and it's got the singer from Till on it. Um, uh, yeah, just um, I'm putting this one in S again. Um, so to me, these two albums are um, by far, in my personal opinion, the best that they use for a name have put out. Um, you know, after this, this is what they became much more of a pop punk band after this. And I think this divided a lot of people. I like all their stuff, but you know you go from depends what your kind of musical tastes are really but um you've got like on on the outside going down the answer is still no amongst many many others um a great cover on there as well um this is the one with uh fairy tale new york on it isn't it i can't see this fairy uh, tale uh, no that's uh more betterness as fairy tale is that, very, is that uh, more better yeah that's next one uh, okay cool but regardless yeah this is um i'm gonna put this one up in s all right so your s tier is used up so dylan what about you making friends <laughs> yeah this is uh this is uh another s damn all um, right you guys are like completely johnny and i we, yeah, we're sharing totally. a brain cell right now we are, <laughs> we totally are. Absolutely. Oh, man. um yeah dude uh Again, every everything he said, man, everything he said, the Dickie Barrett uh, part on um, I can't remember what song, song it is right now, but um, that's cool. I mean, the whole album is great. This uh, this the these two albums uh, are kind of in the same boat as uh, Suburban Teenage Wasteland and Twisted by Design for me. They um, both similar, like one, two punch could have been a double album kind of thing. Um, Great record. Uh, on the outside is one of my favorite No Use songs. So um, even some of the lesser known songs on here are great. So it's a, it's a phenomenal album. It's an S. All right. Well, I'm not too far off from you guys here. I'm going A on uh, on Making Friends. Um, the only the only thing that's keeping it from S is I I think there's like a a lack of a signature song like my favorite song in here is actually Sidewalk which is on like the the back end oh but that's the clip I'm gonna play for this actually but um, I think the next few albums all have those signature uh, no use for a name songs so I'm going A on this one and I'll take us right into uh, the next one here more betterness because it's gonna be my first um, S tier album and i'll bring up the track list and i'll just just to kind of drive my point home like 
first three songs, Not Your Savior, Life Size Mirror, Chasing Rainbows, and you got Coming Close on the back end. These are all like fan favorite, uh, signature, no use for a name songs. Like this album and uh, one other are just bulletproof for me. So this is my first S tier album, More Betterness. Uh, Dylan, I'll pass it to you. What are your thoughts on this one? Definitely more pop punk. So curious what you're going to say. Yeah, it's a lot slower than the last few, um, but all the songs you mentioned are awesome. Um, the fairy tale cover is cool. Weird that it's right in the middle of the album. Um, yeah, not quite. Obviously, I ran out of S's, but uh, I, this is a good A A tier album for me. Um, I like it a lot. I don't like it as much as the last two, though. All right, and Johnny, what are your thoughts on more betterness? Yeah, I've gone with um, A for more betterness. I um, that's a, it's a total nostalgia album for me. Um, I've got such good memories of this. Me and my f- friend, when I was learning to play um, play bass guitar, me and my friend learned this album from all the way through, um, just to sort of get us into sort of being able to play. Um, yeah, it's great. Um, the guitar works really good on it. They've gone a lot poppier. This is the kind of this is the the real news for a name divide, isn't it? Like a lot of like um, sort of the bigger punk bands, there's there's normally a point where it puts certain people off. I had a couple, I had a few friends back in the day who just stopped listening to news for a name when this came out. I mean, I really really like it, but it's clearly a lot poppier. And Tony's vocal style is is definitely different in this. He's um kind of stripped away that kind of grit he had in his vocal to a lot more of a cleaner, poppier sound. It's probably down to the production more than anything else, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's a fantastic album and it just sounds really, really good. This is the one with Chris Schiffler on, isn't it? Yes, I believe. Uh, I, believe I always so, get the yeah. Schiffler's mixed up, which one's in Face to Face and which one's <laughs> in Foo Fighters, but the one that the one that was um been in Foo Fighters for like twenty years, but yeah, he he played guitar on this album, didn't he? Before he left. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, um, A tier for me for this one, definitely. It's funny you mentioned that divide because this was my first No Use album. And I was a freshman in high school when this came out. And I remember seeing like some of the hardcore kids would be wearing like No Use for a Name sweatshirts and stuff. And I was like, what the hell? Like they like this fan? Like I was like, whatever. And it wasn't for like years later that I heard the early stuff where it started to make a sense. So, um, yeah, like for me, when this is the first thing I heard, I didn't have that, like that divide, like, oh, they're too poppy now. So probably the reason for me, it's it's so good and I have so many memories with it. So it's S tier. Uh, but speaking of like going full pop and Johnny, I'll pass this one to you first. We've got, yeah. I think probably their most popular album in terms of like hits. Uh, we've got Hard Rock Bottom came out in 2002. What are your thoughts here on this one? Yeah, I put this one straight in A as well. Um, I love this album. It's great. It is. It is total pop. Total, well, total pop punk. But I mean, like dumb reminders. Any number can play. International U Day. I mean, they're just. You could easily have imagined these songs um, being like in the charts, couldn't you? Yeah. I mean, if that album came out with the likes of um, the sort of modern day pop punk bands who kind of chart, who've been charting high recently, the sort of more pop, 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 pop punk stuff. You know, some of these songs on here, you could easily see um, sort of doing really well and no use for a name sort of escalating. I mean, I don't know if it was, I mean, I don't know what you guys think. I don't, they they clearly got poppier and poppier as they went along. Do you guys think it was a push to try and get a bit more, get themselves bigger or do you reckon it was just that's what they were feeling i think that's just that was just uh, tony's songwriting style i think because mm-hmm. his acoustic stuff mirrors this a lot yeah agreed definitely yeah so um hard rock bottom yeah i'm gonna put that one in eight here all right dylan you guys can't be the same on this one you're out of a's so you had a long streak. You had a long streak of seeing eye to eye, but it's gonna change here. Where Hold are you up. gonna put it? 
Hold on, dude. Pull up the fucking chart. I think I only have one A. I guess I am out of A's. Uh, fuck. Um. <laughs> all right, let's go B plus on Hard Rock Bottom. I like it as much as um as a uh, daily grind for different reasons than that uh, EP. Um, obviously the the most popular songs are fantastic. Uh, I don't like Dumb Reminders that much though. Um, but International U Day is a uh, top three no use song. Um, and overall, the production, this is probably one of their most well produced albums. Um, I think it's a great album. So, B plus, 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 plus. So, you can see I've got this in, in S. Um, not only is this my favorite No Use for a Name album, this is probably like very close to one of my top 10 albums of all time. Uh, I remember um, when I got the fat music that uh, um, I think it's International U Day or no, it's Let Me Down. There was like an alternate version of Let Me Down on a fat music comp. And the second I heard that, I was like, God damn, like this is one of the best songs I ever heard. So um, I think this is the quintessential No Use for a Name album. I think this is a great starting point if you're watching this and you don't know No Use for a Name. This is the most accessible one they have uh, by a long shot. Um, I think I have like seven or eight songs on this album on my main playlist that I listen to every day. So this is an S for me. This is my favorite No Use for a Name album. It's not even close. So there we go. All of our S's are used up. We've got two albums left. And Dylan, I'm going to pass it to you on this next one. We've got Keep Them Confused. You've got your B and C open. Uh, what's it going to be for this one? What families will survive? it's another strong b um black box my favorite Hell song yeah. on this album um yeah i think this is when they kind of perfected that the pop punk sound um so this one's a very strong b for me i like it a lot all right johnny what about you yeah b as well um I agree. Black Box. What a fucking, yeah. what a fucking thing. Um, so good. Um, again, this one's got so many good songs on it. Um, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a strong B for me. If, you know, if you'd allowed us like five S's, <laughs> I reckon I'd be, like, like a lot of the other ones I put in the other ones, I probably would have, would have stuck it up there, but it's just albums I prefer to this one. But, um, like like for, for Fiona it's tragic as well um I absolutely love um yeah a strong strong B yeah I'm with you guys too I'm also going B uh Black Box is incredible for Fiona is incredible um I think it's a step down from Hard Rock Bottom I think like what I liked about Hard Rock Bottom is a lot of like the very I mentioned it before the subtle intricacies in the guitar playing. I feel like a lot of that is this one's a little more by the numbers, um, so it's a slight drop for me. I I have these interchangeable with Making Friends, um, but I'm gonna go uh, B, and I will take us now right into the final uh, No Use for a Name studio album, which is the Feel Good Record of the Year. Guys, this was my big riser. I think this is by far the most underrated No Use for a Name album. I think a lot of people overlook this one, but this was a contender uh, for my S tier. I know that might be like a shock for some people at home, but I think the biggest lie is probably like the perfect merger of old No Use and new new No Use is something they haven't done a lot of on the last few albums. Uh, I think uh, the trumpet player is awesome and the dregs of sobriety is probably my second favorite song on here. So I'm going to go A, all the way up to A on Feel Good Record of the Year. Uh, Johnny, I'll pass it to you here because uh, you and you and Dylan, you used up a lot of your uh, high stuff early yeah, on. So what are you going to do with it? I see. I put this one in C, and I don't feel particularly bad about doing so. Um, I don't know. It feels to me it's got a very Beatles vibe to it in places, and I know lots of Beatles fans will listen to this, or non-Beatles fans will go, "What the fuck is he talking about?" 
but I don't know some of the songwriting kind of feels like that some of the acoustic kind of stuff and the way it's sort of phrased and stuff I don't know it just I just could never get into it when it came out I was so excited about the record coming out I was just like oh just and I, I went back to it I haven't listened to it in ages and I went back to listen to it during this and I thought like I do with a lot of like records you know I might listen to them and then not be into it I've gone back to this one I'm like just can't get into it um biggest line like you said John I I think that's a great song um and little thing just sort of ticking off little ones I've really liked on the record um feel good song of the year I really like um under the garden and a few others um but there's just not enough on there for me I can totally get why you would put it higher John because it has got that real kind of um really nice pop punk kind of well written kind of songwriting and all that kind of thing but I just, yeah I don't know I just couldn't get into it something about it for me that just didn't stick so where, where are you because I think unless I messed up I have uh don't miss the train and daily grind in your C already um uh don't miss the train and incognito, incognito was in D D okay um, I told yeah, you, I, I always make mistakes. Too good. <laughs> See? All right, there we go. Cool. So we got that. And uh, Dylan, I'm assuming this is also going to be a C for you based on your list. Yeah, uh, looking at the chart, I had uh, Don't Miss the Train in C, but leave it leave it in D. Because, um, uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this one in C, and then I'm going to put the, the next thing in the the similar tier the same tier but uh yeah um not a super memorable album which is kind of kind of sucks to say because it was the last album um but uh it's not horrible it's better than uh, their their worst albums better than most bands best album so um obviously biggest lies probably the the most uh well-renowned song off this album um but uh, yeah, I don't listen to it much, but I don't hate it. All right, now the fun part. We all get to pick one random Tony Sly related release. It can be fucking anything we want. Uh, and we're going to rank it. So my pick, and it kind of sucks. I'm going to put it in the C tier because it's all the space I have left. Uh, my favorite Tony Sly solo album 12 song program uh this is a this is a great album uh via munich the shortest pier and uh those are my favorite songs on it um but it's great and i, I really like the um teenage bottle rocket cover of via munich on the compilation the tribute comp they did too um so yeah great great record one of my favorite solo albums all right same here and Johnny, you're, I'll let you go next because I'm really jealous of your pick. <laughs> I wish I would have thought of this, but why don't you take us to your next one? Yeah, so I I think the only spot I got left is B, is it? Yeah, so I'm going to put Live in the Dive um, in there. Um, I love this record. I love all the Live with... Uh, bleh, I can't spit it, spit it out in a moment. Live in the Dive records everything about them is fantastic They're, the sound's always great they, I know they record them over like two or three nights and I'm guessing they get like the best songs kind of thing their audiences always sound like they're really really digging it who knows it might be audiences put in afterwards but I kind of get the feeling it's not um, the artwork on these records is always so good um, I considered getting that as a tattoo I got um as the um, South Bear um, thing tattooed on my leg. But I considered putting that, but I just figured it was just far too much detail, too much going on. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this record. It's just, it's the kind of record you put on, if you're feeling at all bummed out, you whack it on super loud. And by the time you get to the end of it, you just, you just love the world again. Well, I personally do anyway, after I listen to this. Uh, yeah, if if I did live in a dive, it would have to be at least a because it's one of my favorite live records. So I'm gonna I had this one picked out. I'm the same as Dylan. Uh, I'm going twelve song program. I I think I think that Sad Bear is also a contender, but 
I don't listen to anything acoustic. If I, if a band puts an acoustic song on an album, I usually skip it. Um, yeah. But like Tony Sly is like the one artist where I could sit down and listen to an entire acoustic album. Uh, Joey I, Cape. <laughs> I don't know about the Joey Cape stuff, to be completely honest. Um, just something about Tony's guitar playing and melodies. I just I really like this record, and I still listen to it. So it doesn't even feel bad putting it in the B tier. So we'll put 12 song program there and we're going to wrap it up here. And because I've got uh, two awesome guests, I want to see uh, what they're both up to. So Dylan, what is next? What's coming up on dying scene.com? What could we look forward to? Uh, I'm getting fucking drunk. That's what's next. <laughs> All right. And Maybe then. Write a, write, write a dying scene review about you getting drunk. Slow, <laughs> slowly getting drunk. Each beer, how you're feeling, what you're listening to. Hey, you done. That's a good idea. <laughs> and Johnny, what is, um, what is Cat's Claw got in the mix? Anything coming up? Yeah, so uh, lots of stuff with you, John, um, which is good, not to ruin any surprises. But... Um, record from um band from manchester uk um called clayface um which is coming out soon um super kind of gritty punk rock stuff um imagine uh the dillinger four um, um, yeah yeah you, you ever heard of a band <laughs> called the fucking cops i keep comparing Look up the fucking cops. I think Clayface sounds exactly like that band. Oh, really? I will check them out. And what yeah. a great, what a great band name, especially for <laughs> yeah, all the stuff going on at the moment. What, a, what um, about that? Uh, what about that cool. secret No Effects album you guys are putting out? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you, you're just blowing it now. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was going to uh, put out a pre-order for like <laughs> seventy quid a record or something. And um, on 600 different color. <laughs> there you go. Then you can just move to an island somewhere and say goodbye to the world. That's what like the guy from Mightier Than Sword with did. Remember, like the, the guy who repressed albums. all the Blink albums. They just he, he scammed everybody though. He never really <laughs> pressed some of them. I don't think. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, what was that? Um, there was that um, American record label a few years back, which um, they put out the Human Project. Which is really good so technical. Yeah, bird attack. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, bird attack. One. yeah. We we, we bring a bird attack frequently. They uh, did. They, their roster was so stacked, and yeah, it's a shame what happened. Is that is that Human Project record? Is that out of print? Uh, don't know. To be perfectly honest, uh, oh. they've just called it quits recently, unfortunately. Oh yeah. Um yeah. Um, another record coming out. Um, which. John's also involved in um, Astro Nuts from Germany. Um, it's a really nice melodic kind of skate punk stuff going on there. And and then, yeah, uh, a shitload of other stuff in the pipeline. Uh, new t-shirts coming soon. If anyone out there in TV land wants um, to support a um, decrepit UK punk rock label, <laughs> um, yeah, do it. All right, yeah, hey, so... You're putting out good shit, man. Yeah, guys. Cool, thank you, man. Thank I'm gonna, you. I'm going to leave a link to uh, Cat's Claw's store down below. Guys, go check it out. I, I have almost every release uh, back here. Uh, really? They don't put out you anything do. bad. Uh, super happy to be working with Johnny and Cat's Claw because I'm a big fan of the label. And, uh, guys, go check it out. Seriously, the, the label is completely stacked. But... Uh, that's going to do it for this episode. Johnny's going to stick around. We're going to do a quick episode right after this. So uh, make sure you're subscribed, like the video, all that stuff helps the channel. And go click the links down below to support Punk Rock Radar and support uh, Cat's Claw Records. And go read Dylan's articles over on DyingScene.com. And we will see you next time.